All right. Well, welcome, everybody. Thank you for joining our talk today. Uh, we want to give you some perspective on what it's like being a hacker, working in government, working for a corporation, uh, working in the sense of getting academics and degrees and all the goods and bads that go with it. So hopefully this is not your typical workforce talk, but give you some exposure with actual people who are doing things uh, and have had those experiences and a diverse set of experiences internationally and uh, the different backgrounds that they have. So uh, we really appreciate you being here. My name is Steve Lozinski. I am the chairman of the board for the nonprofit side of the Aerospace Village and I've been a part of the village for a while now. Previous life, I was an Air Force fighter pilot, got into cybersecurity. I've thoroughly enjoyed that. And in the private sector, I was a Chief Information Security Officer, and continuing to work with the village uh, throughout that time. So uh, very much enjoying all of those things. So what we'll do today is I'll let all of our panelists, I'll have them go around and introduce themselves and give you an idea of uh, who they are and where they come from, and then we'll jump right into our discussion. So Thomas, how about you lead us off? Okay. Hi, everyone. My name is Thomas Bristow. Um, I'm currently a cybersecurity certification specialist for the Civil Aviation Authority. And I'm currently based in London. Awesome. Ginny? I am a current master's student at Royal Holloway University. I'm doing my master's in information security here in the UK. Awesome. And I know Ginny has a connection because your mom is also doing a talk with us in the village yep. again this year. So <laughs> thank you for that. Declan? Hi, yeah. So I'm uh, I'm Declan Seeley. I'm from the uh, the northeast of England, and I'm a I'm a cybersecurity specialist for the uh, aviation ISAC. Awesome. And Olivia. Hi, I'm Olivia Stella. I'm a cybersecurity engineer in the uh, intelligence and space research division at Los Alamos National Laboratory. And previously, what uh, aviation work? There's a connection there. I want to make sure it gets out. Definitely. Um, I used to work at Panasonic Avionics and American Airlines. Awesome. Awesome. So uh, good. Again, diverse crowd, diverse backgrounds and uh, going from there. So we'll jump right into it. Uh, everybody's journey getting here. So, I, you know, I told you from my background, flying experience, cybersecurity, and then just being able to combine both of those with the village is something that I thoroughly enjoy. Um, and I will say we talked about this as a group favorite superhero or superpower. I actually don't want to just be the guy flying around. I like the Doctor Strange, different powers, teleport, time travel, and try to do interesting things with that knowledge in a good way. Uh, that is what I would say is my favorite uh, superhero and superpower. Um, Ginny, how about you? Uh, for superpowers, I'm a fan of, like the Green Lantern, there's also the Blue Lantern, which is just a corgi that is such a good corgi that it makes everyone do amazing things. Um, I've gotten into this because, as you mentioned, my mom is involved in network analysis to the extreme where, you know, she tried to teach me the OSI model while I was nine and that didn't go very well, but I got into it eventually. <laughs> I'm, I'm still struggling, so I may have to talk to both of you after this. What's your uh, area of specialty in cybersecurity field or, you know, your, what you're studying right now? So I'm currently very deep into both DTN and also encrypted DNS. Those are my areas of interest. Nice. Awesome. Thomas, how about you? Oh, I've got to go for um, a fun, obscure one. Uh, my personal favorite, I think, is uh, Squirrel Girl, who somehow, despite having some of the silliest powers in uh, Marvel, uh, is able to beat some of the strongest supervillains out there. I think she beat Doctor Doom at one point. <laughs> nice. What got you into cybersecurity? Uh, it's quite funny, actually. So I started off at university and just randomly the university emailed about this bursary scheme called the Cyber First um, bursary scheme. And I thought, oh, that looks quite good. It gives £4,000 a year. I might as well try signing myself up for that. Um, so as someone with dyslexia, I'm not very good at applications. So I got my mum to help me put in um, an application to them. And uh, long story short... I got onto it and eventually got both internships and got my placement here. Nice. And what uh, is there a particular area that you focus in your work at CAA? Uh, right now, 
I think it's threat modeling is my very, very key focus, um, but a lot of it's more on the government's governance level. So a few gotcha. abstractions from most things. All right. Gotcha. Olivia, how about you? My favorite superhero, I consider her a superhero, is um, Agent Scully from The X-Files. That was my favorite TV show when I was growing up. And it actually was the reason why I got into um, cybersecurity in the STEM field. I wanted to be a part of the FBI. So the quickest way to do that was to have a degree in some sort of science field. So I was like, okay, I'm going to do computer science. And I found a program in at my local high school so I could do that. So I was just like laser focused on uh, doing computer science. Nice. Thank you. And Declan, how about you? Um, so superhero, superpower, I'm going to have to go basic. I'm going to have to go to fly. Um, I'm trying to teach myself how to do it at the moment. And it's just, yeah, so it's getting, I've been into sort of flying and aviation since I was very young. So it's all like a logical progression. Um, sort of getting into into sort of the, the cybersecurity stuff and then this stuff. Um, for me, it started off just before I joined university uh, with teaching myself. I bought a bunch of um, like study guides for CEA, CISSP, a bunch of different ones. Uh, taught myself those. And, you know, it was a, it was a good base. Uh, eventually ended up dropping out of university, doing some security research, and then I got got into uh, into where I am now. And it sort of that's led into sort of my key responsibilities. So at the ISAC, I do sort of specialize in vulnerability hunting and uh, disclosure management, so engaging with security researchers and things. So good fun. Nice. And you have a talk about vulnerability disclosure in the village this year too, right? Yes. Awesome. Even Not better. I appreciate that. <laughs> so uh, we've alluded a little bit to uh, uh, you know your backgrounds personally, but not where you are and what your organization is. Um, so I'd like to open up the floor, whoever would like to jump in. Where do you work right now? What are the, you know, what's the, the big picture of what, what that company, organization, whatever it is, does uh, and, and your role in that? Who'd like to start off? I'll start off. So yeah, currently I, I work from home. Um, I've only been in the office three times, <laughs> um, just like everyone else. That's all right. Um, but um, the CAA currently, I think they have an office right next to Gatwick. So I just drive down um, to there. Uh, but their main like mission, because uh, they always call it a mission, uh, is always to basically help keep aviation safe for the public, as well as trying to make it cost effective, so that we aren't just putting in so many regulations that it's going to cost an arm and a leg to fly somewhere, or it's going to cost an arm and a leg to buy a drone or something. So it's that balancing act. And I think the uh, the good analogy is that's the UK side and the UK version of the FAA here in the States for folks who are uh, keeping up with that. And I don't, I have other good analogies around the world, but uh, those are, that is how we got connected between the village and the relationship between the two. So that's great. Although and interesting, you, sorry, interesting thing. Um, the CAA, unlike the FAA, um, it's an independent regulator. Mm -hmm. So while the government, while the government sort of give us regulations, uh, we're funded directly by industry. Yeah, that is a big difference. Thank you for that. Who, who's next? Yeah, I can uh, I can jump in. So I can talk about yeah. the aviation ISAC. Um, Olivia is well versed. <laughs> um, so the, so the ISAC, uh, I said effectively, we we work as we're a non-profit, and we work to sort of enable and promote information and intelligence sharing within the aviation industry as a whole to sort of protect everybody, uh, and that, that's sort of the, the mission really. And we do that in a, sort of a bunch of different ways. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's it's very extensive, and I've seen a lot of the work over the years. So, good, ladies. Who would like to go next? Um, Jenny, you can go. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. There you go. Um, I don't know if this applies so much as a university student, but university obviously involved in a lot of interesting research. And then, while on this degree, I'm also trying to get involved in a bunch of working groups for things that I'm interested in. I'm involved in the technical documentation working group in the interplanetary networking SIG. Um, I'm involved, or I'm just starting to get involved with the DNS private exchange working group within the IETF. And oh, there's there's a lot of really cool projects right now. So I have like my degree and you know four on the side. But, awesome. Yeah. And is the I know uh, you your uh, undergrad is through Cal Poly, correct? 
Uh, my undergrad is actually through Kingston in the oh. UK. And oh my gosh, okay. <laughs> I keep thinking of how we've gotten connected through the the other topics that we talked about. So, all right, that's good. Um, Olivia, over to you. So I work for a Department of Energy National Laboratory in Los Alamos, and in the Intelligence and Space Research Division, my focus right now is on product security for cybersecurity, and it supports our mission of national security, science, energy, and environmental management. And what's awesome is that if you think about national security as a whole, it covers a bunch of stuff. So to be able to throw in my aviation experience because aviation is part of critical infrastructure, I'm hoping to lend some of the items that I've learned in the past towards the new types of programs I'm supporting at LANL. Nice, absolutely. So where where you came from, where you are right now, I think here's the important part. What's a typical day look like? And really, let's get behind the scenes. It's not just a typical day, but what are the things you really like about working where you are? You know, you, you talked about why you got there. What do you really like about it? Because there's plenty of good things. But also on the honest side is what are the things you don't like? And probably the good things that motivate you to keep staying there and you know, the choices that you made, but uh, I'd like to get that, get your thoughts on that and, and give the audience some background and understanding of, yeah, here's, here's the goods and bads. And, but there's, you know, if there's more goods, that'd be nice to hear. Hopefully that's the case. Anybody want to jump on that grenade and, and start us off? I I'll go. start. Yeah, you go first, Olivia. Um, my typical day is that there is no such thing as a typical day. I believe that too. I, yeah, I don't, I don't care if you work for government or an in industry, just cybersecurity is, is so unique. Um, the way that it's divvied up, I can support several programs, like I'm supporting a satellite program, I'm doing regular like operational infrastructure type work. So it just varies on whatever the, the needs are of the day. What I really like about the environment there at the lab is that it, they're so mellow. It's a great, <laughs> comfortable work environment. I've, I've run the gamut of different um, types of environments where, whether or not it was government or, or industry, where, um, especially in commercial, like you're trying to, to work on things. Luckily, I'm not on an incident response team anymore, so I'm not, I'm not getting calls on Christmas Day saying, hey, this thing got, got hacked or we think we might have a breach or whatever, but it's, it's just nice to have like the regular um, day to day of supporting what goes on normally within our division. Yeah. Nice. And, and, and that is at a government lab. So the yes. fact that there is the variety and a laid back idea that I did not expect to hear. So that is, that okay. is good. Mm -hmm. That's awesome. Thomas, I think you were jumping in before. Yeah. Um, so obviously, as Olivia said, there isn't a normal day. Um, I've gone from doing careers talks to primary school students to um, doing threat modeling to um, phoning a load of um, air, opera uh, air operators about cy the, what cyber requirements they're following um, and everything in between. I think definitely one of the biggest drawbacks, unfortunately, um, as I said earlier, I'm dyslexic, so reading isn't quite my forte, and unfortunately, there is a lot of reading when it comes to um, being a regulator, because you've got to read all the standards, and then I've got to read up on how airplane procedure is um, formed. Um, so currently, my next big threat model, which I'm going to be tackling, is going to be on basically the large aircraft, and I've got to look up how all those procedures work and what are common things within airplanes. Um, but definitely some of the best things are stuff like the team I get to work with are absolutely incredible. Um, so one of the best things in my day is sometimes I'll get a ping and it's the WhatsApp and someone's put a good meme on there. <laughs> and I think the important part of what you're saying is in all the things you just described, uh, what you told me earlier is that you've only been there six months. You're now yeah. officially out of your probation and uh, a CAA employee. So that's that's good news there, too. So a lot going on in just a short time. Yeah, it was gotcha. officially this morning I got it. Nice. Congrats. Ginny, how about you? Uh, so typical day with university is pretty self-structured, especially this year for some reason. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so there's a lot of uh, defining my own schedule, which is honestly something I really like about this year. Um, and that also means that 
I get to be involved in individual projects that I'm excited about. And one of the things that I wasn't expecting as much that I'm really grateful for is that there are so many cool projects happening and people are so willing to take you on board if you just say that you're willing to show up consistently on time and ready to help. And that's it. You can get into some really cool stuff that way. Life lessons. That's perfect. Yeah. Um, For downsides, I'd say, you know, it does make sure that you tackle stuff from a whole bunch of different areas that you might not be uh, as suited to each one as well as the last. And you might, for example, find that you aren't super into advanced graph theory. Um, But, you know, end of the day, it's a small price to pay to find a find new subjects that I didn't know I liked before. So. Yeah, gotcha. Declan? Yeah, I, I really have to echo this, the sentiment of there's no uh, sort of like generic day. <laughs> um, there's, there's a couple of routines I have when I uh, sort of get up, check the news feed, see, what's, see if there's anything popping off from the day before and things. Um, usually it's just a matter of getting a text message when it is happening, though. Um, sort of one of the, my favorite parts of the job, though, is the is, is around my sort of key area of uh, disclosure management. So getting to engage with a lot of different researchers from a lot of different backgrounds, different expertise, it's it's so interesting. Um, and it sort of led up to one of my uh, my favorite experiences, which was we were, we had a researcher contact us, and we were able to get it solved within less than twenty four hours from initial notice to fully dealt with, which was well, I thought it was really impressive. So yeah, yeah. Um, don't like it's got to be it's got to be the hours, it's got to be the, the the changing of the hours, especially the rest of the team are American. Uh, it's a really small team as well, so there's a lot to do. A lot of uh, we we sort of share areas. Um, so how, sometimes having to work like <laughs> I I can imagine you're on the bad side of the time change at that too. So so what you said of you know one of the best things that you did, and I meant to ask this earlier also to get your thoughts on what's the thing that you liked the most, what's the thing you're most proud of in what you've been doing. And again, you know, that has been enjoyable in in the role that you're in right now. Jenny, you want to start off? Uh, I think it's honestly been um, getting to work with working groups um, that there's been that freedom to kind of bring my university experience and help like with the interplanetary networking SIG, we've been working on this library project to gather all tech technical documentation around DTN which is a lot, <laughs> but because I've had the flexibility to do so much on that project, I'm going to be the one who gets to kind of announce it. And that's very exciting nice. to me. So, yeah. Yeah, that's awesome. Is that something only for folks like you that are in uh, going to school and being able to attach or is that open to others? Nope. I just showed up and asked to help. <laughs> so you might have people asking you how they can get involved. So that's good to know. That's why I wanted to make sure. Thomas, how about you? Oh, I think definitely the best thing is watching the impact of what you do start like having its ripple effects. Um, like at one point, I think um, I uh, during my six months, I've made probably the biggest spreadsheet I've ever made of just different planes and all the things which are applicable to them. And now I'm starting to see as each member of the team is using that to basically just grab the uh, bits they need and immediately help. Um, the aerodromes, the air operators. Um, it's been really cool just watching how what you do has such a big impact. So, Thomas, I, as somebody previously in the government, back in the government right now, the fact that you see progress in only six months, that is a proud moment. So please keep doing those types of things. That's awesome. Olivia, how about you? Similar to what Thomas said, um, back when I was working more directly with aviation, I was supporting a security testing type effort for um, aircraft issues. And to see the ripple effect of like, we were one of the first to help sort of point out some items. And I know Declan has a little more (laughs) insight into what I'm saying. Um, The aviation ISAC was like an amazing vehicle to help share that information in like a safe environment. And to see the ripple effect of um, other air carriers and vendors say, you know what, this is a thing we should be concerned about, that that was pretty cool. And then moreover to what I'm doing uh, in Los Alamos right now is to have my current management recognize, you know what, your past experience actually does translate and it works now. The, the fact that they recognize that, that it's been pretty amazing. 
And that is that a, I mean, I think it's a big jump going from an aviation focus to a space focus. Oh, definitely. But you're saying I, there's still plenty of overlap and benefits there. Yes, it's it's great as a starting point, but then I get a quick reality check of that doesn't work in space. That only works terrestrial. So right. I'm quickly I'm quickly learning what the differences are, and I I feel similar to a college student again that I have to start over in certain parts. Yeah. Yeah, I got you. I got you. So in the last few minutes that we have, I think the other thing I want to make sure uh, that would be valuable to our audience is what is your sage advice from all of your wisdom and the time, you know, the path that got you where you are? What are the if somebody wants to follow in your steps and do what you're doing, what 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 do you say? You know, Yes or no about that? Are there huge mistakes? Yes, but do it this way. Things to avoid uh, and resources that they can look into to do things similar to what you've done. So I'll open up the floor to whoever wants to to jump on that one. Yeah, I can uh, I can I can jump in here. So sort of coming from a uh, not not a traditional sort of education background, uh, the biggest thing for me getting to where I was was getting involved with the information security community and industry long before I applied to any jobs. Um, there's communities out there like the Many Hats Club and Dead Pixel Second things on Discord and other places uh, were absolutely invaluable and you meet some awesome people and learn so much. And then uh, the mistakes, oof, uh, don't don't make it your entire life. Don't get burnt out. Have other interests because you will get burnt out. Uh, and it's important to sort of look after yourself that way. Yeah, awesome. Who's next? <laughs> um, I'll go. So for the university path, I definitely think that if I wasn't sure that I would be able to branch out and look at individual projects in addition to my degree, I would not be in a degree program right now. I think that it's a great option to, you know, force myself to look at all these different areas and be aware of my blind spots. But in addition to that, I do want to make sure I can kind of hone in. And if I find a subject that's interesting to me, I want to give it the chance to fascinate me, possibly. Mm -hmm. Um, Yeah. Uh, For advice, I actually was interested in possibly asking you, Declan, because you mentioned um, responsible disclosures as part of what you do. One thing that has been a bit of a challenge in the university setting is sometimes I will run into other students that are not so keen on responsible disclosure and a lot more into bragging. And I'm wondering how you would suggest dealing with that. Oh, that's a difficult that's one. Okay. That <laughs> is, is a good one. Um, so yeah. for, let me let me do this. That's a great teaser because Declan's talk, <laughs> not only will he have his talk that he's going to record, but he'll have the live Q&A. So uh, that is a great question. Either, either join it or Declan, remember that because that's one you can throw out in the room in the Q and A. And that <laughs> I, I'm with you because that is an issue that I think everybody has seen, and and there's been a lot of different approaches. And I've seen it on the government side, and I've seen it on the hacker side. And just uh, there's progress. That's the good news. But that is a great question. So, all right, Thomas, what you got for us? I definitely say um, as someone who went down um, the university route as well, internships could be some of the best ways of getting just like. Uh, hands-on information um i think my my internship between my like my second and my third year was at immersive labs and uh, there's quite a funny story with it where at one point i was working with a content engineer and somehow we took down half the website um whilst we were just trying whilst we were just trying to work with some sort of lab and i believe it was between about five and seven front-end developers came up to our desk and were like you've done something. Can you please go through the steps of exactly what you've done? You've taken down half the website. <laughs> Man. That, that is the intern did it, but that's actually an intern story. So, And the result of that? The result of that was absolutely nothing. Um, we got the website that, that's back That's the up. cliffhanger. We can't end this talk with a, we took down the website. <laughs> and that was the end of the story. So thank you. I'm glad it had a good outcome. That's right. Good. Olivia, to finish us off, please. My piece of advice would be pretty much what everybody else has said, rolled into the thought of being a lifelong learner. So you need to have your education work for you. I'm One thing I'm sort of frustrated still within this industry is that the onus of having a degree is still really, really large, and I wish it wasn't, because I know of some amazing researchers, 
hackers, just good industry professionals that don't have degrees and it shouldn't matter. And I know it's going to take a while for the government space to change that, but I think people are starting to really see the value in that if you have that work experience, who cares if you have a piece of paper? And for myself personally, I never thought I was going to get an advanced degree after after undergrad. But like Thomas said, I had an internship where they were like, hey, after you finish undergrad, if you get your master's, it's going to help you move up in the ranks. And now that I'm at Los Alamos, they are a huge proponent of education. So if you're looking for an environment, here's my plug. If you're looking for an environment <laughs> where you want the freedom to continue to learn and do research, it is amazing. I actually got the opportunity to pursue a PhD and I'm going to do that in the fall at Colorado State within um, cyber physical systems and critical infrastructure. So make your education have a purpose. And my research, the purpose of that is going to be help solving real world problems that I've experienced um, within my past companies. Because I know even though I move companies, you may take the girl out of aviation, but you can't take the <laughs> aviation out of the girl. So I'm, I'm still trying to find ways that I can give back no matter what. Awesome. Yep. The purpose, the focus. Jenny, you mentioned it before. Declan, you have the same thing, just a different path there. And and Thomas, you know, some of the similarities. So thank you all. This is exactly, I, I hope, what the audience is looking for. And, uh, you know, you, everyone can let us know the, the live chat has, has been going the entire time. So I'm sure there'll be plenty of questions and, and more to follow after this. I will put as the final closing comment, other than thank you all for being a part of this, Hopefully you've seen over my shoulder the blinky things, which is the DEF CON 28 2020 badge that we made and sold online. And this year's DEF CON 29 badge, which we have both of those for sale in the village. Please, if you're on site, come visit us. And uh, if you missed out on the virtual sales, I'm sorry. We'll we'll see what we can do to keep producing. And, and we appreciate everybody's, everybody's support for the work that we do and then uh, time joining us today. So thank you, everyone. Thank Thanks, you. Steve. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you.